Are you humbled to be the highest drafted tight end ever in the league on the 86th uh, draft of the NFL? I'm definitely humbled, and it's a, it's a dream come true to even get drafted. And to be top five, that's, that's something special. And the first tight end ever, I mean, I don't even know how to put it in the words. I'm just elated with joy. Um, and we're, I can't even put it in the words how excited I am. And um, what do you know about the Falcons? We had talked to you after your pro day, and uh, how do you think you could fit in and, uh, you know, and your inline blocking? We uh, Those are some of the issues you talked about at your pro day. Uh, I, I know it's a lot of it's a lot of vets and great minds on the, around that team, so – in, I mean, in that building. So to just learn from Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, uh, Calvin, really, the, the list goes on. But to be able to come in and make an impact or something, I want to do that. Blocking-wise, I, I feel like I'll be ready. I'll be ready for when the day comes. And the first day, first day of camp, I'll be ready. And I know Coach Smith does a great job of getting his tight ends fed. So, you know, I'm, I'm eager to see how he uh, uses them. Tori McElhaney? Hi, Kyle. It's very nice to meet you. Congratulations. Uh, I wanted to, to ask you, you know, what is your conversations with Coach Smith been like? It, it, you know, you talk about looking at his body of work, and he's a tight ends guy. He he loves his tight ends. So what does it mean to you to, to work with a coach that has this history with tight ends? I mean, it's everything. I got to learn from someone who's played the position, coached the position, and he, he's biased for tight ends. So now I can't wait to learn from him and take my game to another level. Uh, it's kind of, I mean, we can all like cut on your tape and, and know what you bring, but I, I was just curious, how did Tim Brewster and your Florida coaches best create space for you? How did they create mismatches for you? Because, you know, you stand next to somebody and you're already a mismatch, but how, <laughs> what did they do to elevate that for you? Uh, I think Coach Vaughn did a great job in moving me around, making it, you know, easy for me to, get, you know, get mismatched against the guys who can't guard me. So uh, it just came with repetition, you know, practice, great game planning. And, you know, I appreciate, like I said, Coach Mullen, Coach Johnson for dialing it up and making sure that, you know, when I do go out and line up, I'm, I'm winning my matchups and I'm doing my part. Michael Rothstein. Hey, Kyle, congratulations. Uh, curious, when did – when did you think you might be a first round pick? Like at what point in your head does that actually click to you? Like, wow, this could really happen. Uh, I would say at the end of the year when I, <clears throat> excuse me, started to put some thought into it. Uh, once I declared, I was going, well, you know, I feel, I feel pretty happy in myself and I, I put the money in the pot of myself. So I feel like, you know, God was going to put me in the position to, you know, in the best position. So once I got, I was, I, you know, I was, Always, I don't like to read the media, but seeing myself being projected first round, I was like, okay, that's a start. Now it's time to put your head back down and keep working until the draft day comes. And then when that day comes, start back over to you know get to a start and be an impact on the team. And I want to go back a little bit to your decision to go down to Florida from Philly. You know, Northeast not exactly known for its college football. Southeast is. What went into your decision to go to Florida, and did you kind of go there with the thought that one day this could happen? Uh, I would just say during during high school, I always knew about the SEC. Watch Florida, watch Bama, watch Kentucky, watch Vanderbilt, all those you know top SEC teams, LSU. Uh, but when I started getting offers and getting national exposure, you know, I was doing my research on the tight end depth at every university, so I felt like you know I could play in the SEC in Florida. I could get a great education and I could maybe sit a year or come in and make an impact early. So I just weighed my options, prayed to God about it, and I committed. And that was something that, you know, I stuck with it and I, I don't regret anything about it. Paul Newberry. Kyle, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I just curious, uh, sorry, I jumped on here a little bit late, but I wanted to make, uh, ask you just your thoughts when you, about joining Matt Ryan and, a, and an offense that at the moment includes, you know, some other pretty, pretty nice weapons with guys like Julio and, uh, Calvin Ridley. And just, uh, what do you think you can bring to that offense? Uh, I'm just going to be a sponge and you know, just learn it, learn it from those guys who are going to eventually be Hall of Famers and to be drafted to their team and, to be able to learn from them and see how they go about the game and see how they win and how they, you know, go about their business is something that I can't wait to see. And from day one, I'll be, like I said, like a sponge, soaking everything up, all the knowledge I can, all the relationships I can build. 
and I'm excited for the journey. Do you, um, we, uh, how does how do you feel about two going to a team obviously that's uh, in a bit of a rebuilding mode and uh, has some obviously some nice some nice weapons, but uh, you know it's not had a lot of success the last three years. Well, I, I think this team is on the rise, and Coach Smith is going to turn the turn the organization around. And I feel like you know people may think it's it's a work in progress, but I feel like we have a start, and I think we'll better be very victorious throughout the year. Jeff Schultz. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, um, obviously you've been in a lot of mock drafts um, where you were projected to go forth to the Falcons. But I'm curious when you first had the feeling that they were really interested in you and when you really first believed that that's where you were going to be selected. Uh, I would say they kind of they didn't sh they wouldn't. How can I just say this? They didn't like overly show it. I guess you'd say they kind of running like they're all the other teams where they didn't really show. They didn't like how can I describe it? They didn't give it away, I guess you'd say. They weren't like get, throwing any hints, but I was just talking to them a lot and having meetings and them kind of picking my brain. I was picking their brain. So, I mean, I kind of, I didn't have a feeling, but I feel like, uh, you know, I thought all the conversations went well and all my interview process went well. So you didn't really know till they called you, basically? Yes, sir. Right. And then uh, second question, how do you think, let's say, the offense that you were in, kind of following up on maybe Tori's question, the offense you were in at Florida, to some degree translates to the NFL and maybe what Arthur Smith's going to be running uh, with the Falcons. Uh, just like Coach Mullen, um, and Coach Smith, they, they, love, they love their tight end. So, you know, I'm eager to see how they make make motions and mismatches in the offense. And um, I'm eager to see how they, how also he used his, his outside all-stars and, you know, kind of made throw me in the, throw me in the fire. Kelsey Conway. Hey, Kyle, you were just talking about how the Falcons didn't really um, show you that they were going to take you. But what are some of those meetings that you had with them? Like, can you let us in on just kind of the types of questions and things you guys talked about? Uh, the first couple were just relationships, uh, seeing seeing how I am as a person, me mentally, physically, uh, just just trying to get to know me. And you know, once we start getting in the ball, watching film, getting into ball, chalk talk, uh, getting on the board, trying to. They're trying to, I guess, give me a couple of plays and see if I can retain them. That, that's how it started off. But, uh, in the end, it was kind of, I feel like it was it was going in the right direction because I was maybe, you know, hitting all the things that I wanted to hit and you know, I was showing them, showing them that I was prepared. And when you got the call that you were going to be taken, obviously with the number four overall pick, uh, what word would you use to describe the feeling that you had? Surreal. Uh, to get that call and finally just walk across that stage and have them see my jersey and pick up that hat it's something i've been dreaming for since i was a kid and every year when i watch the draft to be able to now i'm in the draft and i'm walking across that stage is it's mind-boggling but you know I'm, I'm ready for that the new experience jason butt hey kyle congratulations um Thank you. you know you mentioned uh obviously yeah, or do you line up outside in addition to, to uh, the traditional tight end role? Um, how much extra time at, at practice at Florida did, did you kind of work as a receiver? And just uh, how, how is it that you are able to to be somebody who can line up as as a as an ex receiver, but also on the line of scrimmage uh, next to the tackle and, and be able to succeed in both areas? Um, I didn't really do a lot of practice or individual on the outside, but it, it really came after practice. That's when me and Kyle got our chance to get the reps in that we need from the outside that maybe, uh, because I don't, I just stay tied in all, all during practice. Um, so me and him kind of had a relationship and we kind of knew coming from what we already had and what we already knew, we, we had a good timing. And I mean, it's, it's pretty good being versatile and having that having that treat, but I, th I think it's more of a tank than I, I can add. Okay. And, um, and, you know, the tight end position, uh, just from, from your observance uh, in the NFL um, over the last, you know, you watching it over the last five, ten years, how important, more valuable is this position now with the things that these teams are doing with the tight ends in, in your estimation than, than uh, you know, back then when you were just a kid growing up watching the game? I think it's real special because, like you said, now the tight, the tight end position is starting to evolve. And we're being very, 
we're, we're being used much more in the offense and sometimes even at first read on some plays. So to see how it's changing and seeing how tight end is kind of a mismatch and how people it's kind of hard for defense to kind of scheme up on the offenses and certain tight ends is it's pretty special to see how the position is coming and how it's changing and how we're making increase early. Justin Felder. What's up, Kyle? Uh, congratulations. You know, a, a guy on the Falcons we've heard for years, people talk about how much of a mismatch he is, is Julio Jones. Is he a guy that you watched growing up or even watched recently? And, and what's it going to be right. like, you know, playing with him, a, a, a guy, you know, who, similar to yourself as a, in terms of being a mismatch? Definitely watched Julio since he was in Alabama. Uh, he's a great route runner, big, 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 strong receiver. I can't wait to you know, pick his brain and see how he goes about, you know, winning his matchups in the NFL because it's a new level at the, at the, at, the, at this level. And it's not college anymore, so you're going to have to use different tools in order to beat these, you know, professional DBs. And I'm sure it's a whirlwind. You probably talked to Arthur Blank and then Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot. Did anything any of those guys said to you stick in your mind? What was the one thing that they said on the phone that, that really stuck to you? Uh, just starting off with, you know, are you ready to be a fighter? Uh, it's a lot of work that's going on Zach Klein? I was reading online about a GM that said, uh, I'm usually against drafting tight ends that high, but he's a bad dude. Uh, if someone's never seen you before, what makes you so bad on the field? I just feel like, like uh, versatile, being able to do different things, line up in different places, motion. Uh, play in the backfield, you know, someone that you just can't can't say he's just going to play on the left side, yeah, he's gonna right side, or he's going to just play receiver. Just moving around, being being mobile, getting mismatches, and winning my matchup and scoring the scoring the ball. I think I and most better. guys in high school, Kyle, that are what six six two forty or getting that bigger, usually play defense before they you know, as a tight end. Were you, were you ever on a defensive side? Were you ever want to be a defensive end? And I guess one was a switch to that you realized you had a special skill set on offense. I played both sides, both sides of the ball through high school, but I never kind of liked defense. I was always an offensive guy. I always loved scoring. I always loved knowing that you don't know what I'm doing, and you're gonna guess, but and and I'm gonna win. Steve Weish. Uh, hey, Kyle. Yeah, you know, I, I spoke to uh, your assistant coaches down there. He told me about you, your your approach to practice. Tomorrow. Oh, every yeah. day, he said, he said you brought it every day. Was, oh, you never took a playoff. What, how are you able to kind of just maintain that focus? Um, practice is important. Reps, reps. I'm a rep guy, so I love practice because I know that that's where I can. I practice is supposed to be hard in the game, so when practice is hard. I know I'll be prepared for the game and you know, I won't be winded. I'll, I'll know my assignment, I know what my opponent's doing, and I'll be ready for the ready for the all four quarters. And when you're watching, uh, you know, tape and Coach Smith and some of the assistant coaches, you know, they really like to kind of maybe even pick on a guy to find matchups. I mean, what did you learn in watching some of those scheme breakdowns, you know, on how they're going to use you? Oh, we didn't we didn't go that far into depth, but they were just telling me how, you know, he's saying just look at what he's done. And if you've seen Johnny Smith, he, he gave, fed him. So I'm, I'm eager to see how this goes. And, I think it'll be a great experience. Thank you. Thank you. Jarrett Bell. Hey, Kyle, congratulations on the pick, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. So when you think about uh, making the transition to the NFL level, and you probably touched on some of these things, now, what do you feel like the biggest challenges are going to be? And are there NFL oh, tight ends oh, in the game, a Travis had, oh, that you've studied oh, and picked up nuances from? Uh, I'm excited for the speed. You know, it's another level of speed. And I'm excited to see how these professionals, how they play. And I'm going to match myself against it. And I look up to Travis, uh, Eric, George Kittle. Those are three, those are three staple guys right now that are representing the position very well. And, and, uh, I like to take some of their things that they're using in the game and you know, add it to mine. So now that I'm in the same league as them, it would be even better to just watch them every week and you know, try to be the best.